Hey guys, RetroNot88 here, back again with another video on these arcade one-up cabinets. Um, as I said, oh, so last time I, when I left off, I was talking about asteroids here. Um, I, I did want to say that this, I, I looked back, so this joystick did come from eBay. Uh, Ultimark does offer these, although I think they're sold out right now. And you can get them from Groovy Game Gear. I think I said Gamer, Groovy Game, whatever. It's Groovy Game Gear. Um, and, uh, they, they sell not only this stick, all, you can get the stick in so many different places. It's the same stick everywhere. Um, but the, but Groovy Game Gear is also the company that does the Tron covers. So check that out if you want a, an official like Tron joystick and they're like replicas from the same mold. Apparently they, they are almost, I mean, it's like it's pr pretty much just re like continued production of the same, uh, Tron joystick, so uh, that's really cool. Um, and as I said, I have these things, um, soft touch uh, leaf type buttons without having to actually buy official, like actual leaf switches. And then I wanted to mention one more thing about the spinner. Um, if you are not planning to mod your cabinet at all, uh, you don't need to actually go get an Ultimark spinner or this Groovy Game Gear spinner. Um, this is the Turbo Twist 2. You don't need to get any of these necessarily. These are going to run you... Well, when you get the uh, accessories that, that require required to use it, uh, these run around 90 bucks, um, And they can go up from there depending on what you get with them. But there's actually uh, Glenn's Retro Show. Uh, you should If you don't watch that already, I don't know what you're... You would definitely need to go find that channel because Glenn's been doing videos on the Ar Arcade 1-Up from you know the get-go. But uh, he's, you may or may not have seen, just recently, he released a video where he uh, announced um, the, uh, uh, I, think, I think he actually announced the price of his um, um, spinner that he's been talking about. Uh, and I think, it, I want to say he said 50 bucks is what they're aiming for. So it's a $50 spinner. One of the interesting things about the one that he's offering, and it's made by a friend of his that can machine these, um, they're making them so that they are basically like solder free and work with the arcade one up like out of the box you just plug it straight into the arcade one up there are some complications with speed you know adjustments and stuff but there it's got like um jumpers to to help that so anyway if you're not planning this is, here's the deal if you're not planning to do a retro pie mod of any kind and you're going to be playing the stock arcade one up um, that's a really good uh, way to go is actually the one from Glenn's Retro Show. So check that out, and uh, I'll leave a, a link in the button bucket for that. So, um, but like I said, if you uh, if you if you want like one of these, and I gotta say the one from Glenn's Retro is pretty cool. Uh, it's big. The handle is really big. It's silver. I don't know if they're gonna you know have black ones. I really don't know. Uh, one thing I did notice is that when when he spins his um, you can kind of see the top wobbling, which you're not going to see in, in these. Um, that might be because it was a prototype. I don't know. But I have to say, even if it's exactly like that and that's the one that you end up getting, it's not that bad. I mean, <laughs> if it's 50 bucks, I, I, I personally, I wouldn't really worry about it. I, I mean, it's, it, it looked really nice to me and it, did, it spun freely and it was really good. So um, anyway, so check all that out. Um, Again, Ultimark makes these. You can get them from other dealers on eBay if you can't find any from Ultimark, um, or if they're out, or or if you, their shipping is a little high. Um, and uh, this, these are Groovy Game Gear. Ultimark has theirs as well, which also tend to sell out. But um, uh, you know, like I said, Groovy or uh, uh, Glenn Glenn's Retro Show be a good uh, alternative especially if you're not going to use a retro pie so here i'm going to talk about the pac-man in this video so this is my pac-man and i have done some modifications to it first of all notice uh this is the soft touch you know gold leaf actually i keep calling it i'm not i'm saying soft touch because that's what it is it's not called a soft touch it's a, called a gold leaf button but there's no click so it's it's like a classic arcade machine 
Um, but the other thing I did is I added the Pack Pro joystick, uh, which is another uh, cool joystick you get from Groovy Game Gear. And um, I know what you're thinking. It's 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 better because it has a super huge dust washer here that can spin and I, I think that's important for a good joystick but no there's more that's not the only reason that it's cool um, I installed down here now uh, when I when I put it in I, I this was kind of experimental one thing I noticed was that um, it's really short and you cannot like like you can with a sandwa or something you can just get an extender you know and 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 it will it will make it longer you can't do that with this this is like a like a like an actual arcade joystick and what i mean by that is that uh the knob doesn't come off the the ball top does not unscrew this is when you go walk into an arcade you're not going to be able to unscrew these toppers because the way the that a you know professional arcade machine is is made is that the ball top is fused to the stick sometimes it's all one piece sometimes it's just you know uh, permanently attached but um you know of course you're not going to have you don't want gamers like unscrewing this and walking off with it or whatever uh which i'm sure you've actually noticed at walmart <laughs> these things missing um you don't find that at arcades because they're fused it's all one piece so um adding adding an extension is not really uh an option here um if anyone has any other options or found any other way to do that uh, Lee, you talk, tell me. Uh, put a comment down in the bucket and or uh, down in the comments and, and let me know because uh, I'm interested in in other people who who've done this mod. But what I did uh, is what I, you know a few other people have done, which is take a router. You just take a router to this. Now, once you take the router to this and you 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 create uh, a, um, a, a a kind of a, a depressed area with a thinner wall between the top you know um and and the bottom uh the the ball top doesn't you know it sticks out higher the, the the joystick comes out further but also you don't have a whole lot of room to screw into so one option what i went with was i just used uh, wooden rods and i screwed into those now i had to screw um or i had to drill holes you know to pro to you know get them ready uh, primer holes to get them ready for the screws and I I didn't make those holes big enough down here or maybe I was just too close to the edge but as you can see it cracked it hasn't changed it at all. it hasn't really affected the structure um, the stability at all for me so I'm not gonna worry about it if it gets loose at some point I guess I'll, I'll mess with it again but um, I, I haven't had any problems with it uh, but it did split it, so you had to be really careful with that. Uh, basically, you just have to be really careful overall, because you don't want to come, you don't want to screw through this. Uh, so anyway, what I did is I, I screwed straight into the plastic, into the ABS, I think it is plastic, of this uh, joystick. And uh, in here, two screws there, and and two on the other side uh, to keep it stable, and then two uh, here into the back of the control panel itself. And that has made it just rock solid. I mean, this thing isn't moving at all. Um, but back to like what the point of this particular device is, like like this particular joystick. Why this joystick? Well, because it is a leaf switch joystick. So as you can see, um, it it makes contact with these leaf switches. And now there are a lot of leaf switch joysticks out there. Like I think there's like a Wicco that's a you know kind of a famous one. A lot of people will get. And if you're, you're you you really should pay attention. To a lot of those are uh, eight way, okay. So if this goes up and to to the left or right or whatever, it's going to engage both at once. This does not. This what makes the Pack Pro a little different is it's a leaf switch style joystick that will not engage two directions at once. You know, it's just machined that way so that you can never have a diagonal direction. Now, while that comes in really handy for Pac-Man, it's uh, critical for other games that require uh, four-direction jo uh, joysticks, like, for instance, Zookeeper. Because in Zookeeper, every time you go diagonal, it, the, your guy just stops. I mean, it really messes up the whole game. So that's 
for instance, is a, is a game where having a an eight-way joystick can be detrimental to the gameplay. Uh, I think in Pac-Man, it's just, just kind of annoying. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't, I haven't really... I don't know if I've ever... Well, I'm trying to think. I mean, I guess I've, I've played like a main version uh, with, with an eight-way, but um, I don't know. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mess with it, though. I would go for a, for a proper four-way joystick, and this Pack Pro from uh, Groovy Game Gear fits the bill. So um, what did I do about the buttons, though? So, you know, a lot, as you can see, I mean, yeah, it's, it's Pac-Man, but um, it's not exactly the same Pac-Man. First of all, get into the buttons. Hold on. <laughs> going, going kind of fast here. First of all, one thing you might notice is that um, I've got um, scan lines. Okay, so this this kind of appears to be a um, a CRT monitor. You know, it looks like a CRT monitor as you play it, which means that it, it, unlike the arcade One Up, you know, stock boards, you're not seeing any um, sort of jiggly pixels. Uh, you know, where y y your your character will be like maybe one pixel off, slightly too wide or slightly. Too. It's uh, it's called pixel shimmer. And it's an artifact that a lot of people have noticed, and so you don't get that on this board, this uh, or with this, uh, you know, with like a, uh, a RetroPie setup. So that's what this is. This is a RetroPie setup, and uh, let me get focused again. And then, so if I come out here, there's there's the RetroPie. I'm using a, um, it's a vertical, um, it's like a, it's specifically a vertical arcade set. Um, that you can find on arcade punks, and uh, it's great because it's all it's all arcade it's all vertical it's, and it's completely set up for you to be vertical in the, you know from the get go. One thing I will warn you about is um, your mileage may vary, but when I tried it out, my monitor was upside down, and I tried a lot of things to try to flip it in software, and I, there just kept being so many little places where it was still somewhat messed up so you know what i did i actually just uh wiped it started over with the same image and physically took the monitor out and flipped it over um and i actually like it better that way because then i'll show you why some people have talked about how pac-man uh there's uh, like there might be something wrong with the monitor because it fades out and you can like kind of walk from side to side and look at the monitor uh you know in other arcade one-up games and you don't have that problem, but with Pac-Man, watch, when you come from this side, look how much it fades out. It really fades out. Um, and as I come in uh, from this side, it's it's much brighter. And the reason is uh, that this is a monitor that is turned on its side. That's how vertical works. Um, and you would actually find the same issue with the other games if you were to get up on a ladder and look down on it versus you know look at it from the floor um, you would find the same issue. Um, now, I say that, but not exactly the same, because another thing going on I've noticed is that my... I don't know about you guys, I and mean, I've seen this with a lot of Pac-Man games. I think this might be pretty much universal with Arcade 1-Up, but this monitor is different. This is not the same monitor that came with my Asteroids, my Street Fighter 2, my other games. They did not come with this monitor. This is a... It says a blacker blacks, richer, richer color, um... Uh, it 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 uh, it has a different look and it's a little shinier too. Like the the surface of the screen itself is shinier. So it's really interesting. It's a different monitor, and I think that it does have a different viewing angle property. Um, you know, different a viewing angle um, uh, capabilities. So um, that's that's another thing that goes into the mix here, but. This is something that, you know, a lot of, like, programmers, a lot of people deal with text a lot will, you know, get a monitor to, you know, mount uh, vertically uh, on the, you know, in their, their computer setup. And this is something that we always have to deal with. It's like you have you to find a monitor that is capable of having, like, a wide viewing angle when mounted vertically is actually kind of challenging. So um, I, I think that's, that's, that's what the problem is. And in my case... My Pac-Man is kind of in a corner here, and it looks best from this viewing angle. So before I flipped it, it actually looked better from the other viewing angle, which means that from the other side of the room over here, it was all faded out. So I actually really like it a lot better now 
flipped around. This is better. I'm happy. Um, so that's Pac-Man and the buttons. Sorry uh, for the tangent. Getting back to the buttons. Um, what I decided to do here is that, of course, you know, you have games that um, require buttons and Pac-Man doesn't. So what do you do about that? You can drill a whole bunch of extra buttons into your machine, of course. Um, let's let's go with uh, we're gonna go with Dig Dug, Dig Dug, do, 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 Dug. Okay, here's Dig Dug, right? So uh, these are my A and B buttons right here, and I decided to go ahead and make the uh, you know player start buttons up here, um, and I did them in black. Why did I do them in black? So that when you're standing back here. The Pac-Man machine doesn't really look any different, and that's what I wanted. I, I wanted to be able to just kind of back off from the Pac-Man machine and not really see anything different. You know, just just have it feel like the the, the stock arcade one-up Pac-Man machine. I haven't thought about putting them here and covering these up, but I decided not to. What I did is I actually used my overlay for the asteroids because I do have the deck protector. I just haven't installed it yet, and I put the deck protector over this, and I used that as my template to install these two buttons. So these two buttons are in exactly the same place as they are on the, the asteroids. And I felt like that gave me a nice and uniform look so that the buttons are in the same place on every machine. One difference is that I did drill the holes kind of the way you would on a real arcade where you know the hole is the size of the shaft that goes into it and no bigger. So the, the button goes down to the hole and, and then it just rests right on the glass or the plexi whereas of course the other you know holes are cut so that the, the button is like you know in there and the hole kind of is around it and um, it does not rest on the glass that's annoying I wish it I wish it was not designed that way but it is um, but I, I wasn't about to try to first of all get these perfect you know cosmetically perfect holes with with a hole saw um, and this way, the holes themselves are just hidden, so who cares? Um, and I, I think that that's a better look. And anyway, the whole point was to not really see the black buttons. That's why they're black on black. So, you know, I, I just, I don't want to see them, you know? If I'm back here, like, you can't even see these things. So that's really what I wanted. So I don't really care that they're sitting on top. Um, and so, you know, you, you, you play hit play, you know, you go in, and right now, this is coin up, and this is start. Now, what I'm going to do, what I haven't done yet, is I'm going to add the, the kick plate art, and I'm also going to put in a couple of buttons here, um, down, down in front, for coin up and coin up, coin up player one and coin up player two, um, and that'll be start player one and start player two. When I do that, I'll, I'll rewire it. So, um, sound, I just used the speaker here, and I put the amp on the inside. Now, this is kind of ugly from the back, but, um, but there you go. There's the volume knob. And it's just, it's just right here on the back, you know, you, you can just adjust it. And, um... And I, I, I like that. I like that. I don't want it visible. I, I just want to be able to reach back there. That's I've had real arcades, and that's how I always did it. I just hid the controls back up above it or behind it. You know, you kind of reach behind it, and you mess with it. Although these are a little close to the wall for that, so I put, you know. There's a lot of space back here, though, to do stuff, you know. And so that's, that's, that's I'm just u utilizing some of the space behind here that you can't really see. To, to do some stuff. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, but because uh, I, I still need to take this and put it on a power switch. And w so what is all this? What is all this? Well, I have two here because one of these will actually go on to an arcade that will be here and is not yet. So I'm just got it hanging out right here for now. But this is the official, you know, this is the one from, from Pac-Man. You can't see these at all from the front. Uh, they're, they're designed to shine up on the wall. And above them, of course are, you know, Pac-Man and Shadow and a couple of the the blue ghosts. And um yeah, I did try running these with the batteries at first and that was um that was horrible. Uh they drained the batteries, you know, with like one 
you know, in one day. And um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, decided to, to, to not do that and <laughs> run instead um, little white. Uh, these are um, like phone uh, USB charger wires. Uh, now, somehow I ended up getting one that has like a glowy, I don't know, I'm going to buy new ones. These are from the dollar store, okay? And actually, there's one, uh, the one of the Pac-Man does not have the, the light, and it's not quite as long, so it actually is better hidden, so I'm going to replace these. But they're from the dollar store. They're like, you know, three feet or something. I don't even think they're that long. I don't know how they long. I don't know how long they are, but they're, they're not very long. And they come out of here. This, this is some, like, channel that you can just kind of... Uh, hang up on the wall to hide cords and so I used white cables you know white power cables um, white wall you know cable channel and I, I'm I've got the camera up really high as you can see but down at eye level you know when the arcades are there you, you, you just you don't really see anything they just kind of go straight down and they're just kind of hidden um, very subtle and then I have the uh, the RGB lights there behind the games, so those shine up on the wall, and um, and then my little Pac-Man characters up there. Um, I did go for four because I just uh, I don't know there was something a little sparse <laughs> with like two ghosts and Pac-Man, and uh, just the one extra ghost for me kind of added a little extra action. Like he's chasing a couple of ghosts, but he's also getting chased by, of course, Shadow, because who else? Um, so, yeah, that's that's my Pac-Man. Uh, like, so, like I said, Leaf Switch style joystick. Um, you do not have to use a router under here, but be aware that you're going to see it just a sliver of silver. Comes up to about there. Totally playable. I gotta say, it was totally playable. I just didn't like it. It was it was a little too close. I like to be able to get my, my fingers under it a little more. But, I mean, you can actually play it that way. Um, I used a Dremel with a cheap drill bit. I don't recommend that. Um, if you have a particular, uh, you know, router or router bit that you like, drop that in the bucket because I'm really interested to hear that. Because uh, I, I honestly, rather, like... Drilling out that hole with the router bit with the, you know, Dremel was hell. It was not fun. So let me know if you have uh, any recommendations uh, for other people who want to do this um, for a different way to, 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 to do this. If maybe a Dremel with a really nice bit or maybe just a completely different piece of hardware because it was it did not want to plow through this wood. It, it took me two sessions because it kept overheating. Um <laughs> And, you know, like I said, um, soft leaf style buttons. This is a, a soft leaf style joystick. It feels like Pac-Man, you know. It feels like a classic arcade game. I'm really happy with it. Um, and I decided cosmetically I wanted these games to either be true to the arcade one-up look. So if I have extra buttons, I'll just hide them, you know here and black or in some cases I might you know do like this where I change the the color of the buttons for player one and player two to black to kind of match the volcano the little black volcano style buttons that came on that arcade um, and since my arcades are going to be all lined up side by side I'm going to go ahead and do the kick plate art just so I can have art on the front because otherwise all you'll see is this kind of you know marquees and this black front and that's it so those are the exceptions but for the most part i just want my 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 games to kind of look like arcade one-up games for me part of the 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 peel of these things is that they all kind of look the same you know um they have they have this symmetry about them and they look really slick in your living room um and I really like that. Um, another thing that I haven't really mentioned yet, and this is this is all the parts that <laughs> I'm still putting all this stuff together, and I have a whole bunch of extra parts. But pretty soon there'll be a, another machine there. Um, but I did go ahead and build just one, you know, riser for the whole row. Okay, so when this is all done, 
and I'll talk about the Street Fighter soon. Um, when this is all done, this is going to be, you know, one kind of counter, you know, one uh, platform where everything just kind of sits and, um, and, and it's all at the same level. And this is all, actually, the, the platform I'm using is a little bit higher than the risers. The official arcade one-up risers, which I think are about 12 inches, um, keeping in mind that they actually sit inside it and go down a bit. I think they're about 13 inches high, but I think they only raise the arcade about 12 inches up. I could be wrong. Um, mine is 15 inches because I just wanted a few extra inches. I just, I just wanted a bit taller than, than the one that they offer, and uh, that was kind of perfect for me. Uh, but that's subjective to whoever is playing, of course. Um, in fact, if you have a lot of kids, you probably don't want it any higher than the actual risers because they, they may have trouble even reaching the buttons. Um, or if you like playing sitting down, you might just want to leave them down low. I like playing them sitting up, but in this configuration, at least I can just get um, a stool, you know, like a bar stool, and, and move it around and just, you know... So I have the option... Of sitting, but most of the time I'd like to play standing, and they're perfect for that. So that's my setup. Um, that's my Pac Man, and now you've seen kind of the asteroids and the Pac Man. So next time I'm going to talk about what I have done to the Street Fighter and kind of where I'm going with it. And that's it for now. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, like it or don't like it. That's cool with me. And uh, either way, hit the subscribe so you can continue liking or not liking my videos. Thanks for checking it out. Retronaut88, out.